Well, hello, folks. It's Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and uh, it's time to catch up on uh, something I hold near and dear to my sequencing. And for the first time, something that is fully functional that I'm fully excited about and will fully share with you here, and that is creating center points for your groups and this time it really works now if you'd like to hear it from the horse's mouth uh you can go over to keith wesley over at his youtube channel or eventually it'll find its way to the xlights.org group and you can watch an hour long or so video of him discussing the features enhancements changes from 2011 to 2020.18 and so I, of course, always go check these out because I'd like to know what's new. I don't want to fumble my way around. And for those of you that uh, have difficulty understanding the Australian accent, which I know a few of you do, Eric, we're, we're, I'm talking to you, dude. You know who you are. Uh, I don't. I understand it very well uh, because I've learned from Jeff and he's been a great teacher and translator for the Australian language. So thank you, uh, Jeff, for that. Anywho, I digress. Let's get back to this. Uh, why is this so important? Well, if you buy sequences from the various vendors out there, in including me, um, then understanding this will be of significance to you. And the goal really is to make your mapping experience as pleasant as possible. Uh, again, I don't really believe in this snake oil shenanigans of easy mapping. Uh, easy mapping really means, oh, I just have a whole lot less models and groups and probably no sub models for any of the high de high density props. And, and then of course that is easier mapping, duh. Uh, but for those of you that challenge your show to the point of going to that extreme level with Gilbert Engineering high density props, well, you'll wanna pay attention. And I think you'll like this. Um, and I've just made some of these changes to my layout now that they work. Uh, thank you, X Lights, for that. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Who wants to go in in a sequence and have to always adjust? Let me just bring this back here. Why should we make you always go in here to an effect and have to adjust the buffer just to get it to zoom left or right? Or why should we expect you to go in here and adjust the XY coordinates just to get it centered. No, 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 no. There's always been an easier way, and I'm really excited it's here. But let's talk about how to do this. Because there's a couple of gotchas in here that you need to be aware of, and I wasn't really sure, and I mistakenly stumbled upon the uh, fix. I hope it's the fix. I hope it didn't screw anything up, but uh, we'll let you be the judge. Let's look at this flakes group. I don't see a center point on here. And you know why you don't see a center point on here? Uh, is because it doesn't exist in the 3D world, so hopefully that'll get fixed. But if I go back to a 2D world, and we can all do this, and remember, if you wanna drag this around, hold that little scrolling wheel on your mouse and push the button down, and then you can do this kind of stuff. And then you can use the wheel to scroll in and move it all about, no big deal, right? So, there's the point. Um. I think the color might be better served maybe being uh, something a little more contrasty. It's, it's, it, it can be really hard to see this unless you get in there. Looks like a gun sight or something like that. It's kind of cool for those of you that are gamers. Um, but if you're way out here, it can be really tough to see. And the idea that I had for my flakes was, and, and I don't do a ton of these effects, you know me, uh, but if I wanted to put a windmill, on my flakes effect. It'd be cool if this were the center point here and have the swirling around as opposed to it being somewhere else. So to get that to happen, you wanna click on the group that you're trying to center and you have these X and Y offsets. Cool, fair enough. And that's all you do is you finagle around and figure out where the X and Y offset is. There are some model groups that doesn't work so easy or easily because of the default layout mode. If I were to change this back to grid as per preview, which is the default and click save. Um, oh, now, of course, now it's gonna show it. Now it's gonna show it, right? But problem is, don't care if it shows it, I can't make any changes in my XY. No, no, no. This, for, for the, now, by the way, don't change it unless you can't change it. Does that make any sense? I guess it does. Uh, don't 
change your default layout mode unless you do not have the ability to change the X, Y axis offset for centering. And so all I did was change this to minimal grid and suddenly it pops back up. Oh, and thank goodness it keeps, it keeps it there. And so for my eaves, I decided to put the center in the center of the house about in the midline here so that it's kind of halfway in between these. I, you know, I'm not gonna go in here and measure this, but I mean, it, it rarely am I gonna use it for that. But I will tell you what I really do like, and that is the very center point between the left house, left part of my house and the right part of my house. This has always been a pain in the butt to me. And I'll, sh I'll tell you, I'll show you what I mean. Um, in the past, this effect right here would be starting about an inch over to the right. And I'd have to compensate. I'd have to move my buffer over. You know, it's, this is what the effect used to look like. Yeah, it was more like this. See that? Let me just speed this up so you can see it. Okay, Ron, that's, so that's, that's not the center, but that's what it was. That's how x Lights was seeing the buffer. So now I could just leave the center. So if you have my sequences or anyone else's sequence and they're smart enough to use this, uh, then all you have to do is define your center point for all of your groups. And this is really specially important for all pixels group. My all pixels group, look at this. Look at this center point right here. That's pretty doggone close. Now, could I get it a little bit closer? Let's find out. Nope, the other way. Oh, nope, I think it was good where it was at. Then I'll arrow up. Oh, that looks pretty good. I think that's, that's pretty center right there. And the whole purpose of that is so that when we do put a whole house effect way up here, way, oh, and I should remember there's a shortcut to get you to the top. Um, let's, here we go. Here, let's just put you over here, all pixels group. And we'll make this wider. That is on the money, honey. That's right in the center where we want it. You gotta love it. I've been wanting this for such a long time, not for myself, but for the people that map sequences to make it just that much easier for you to get onto the important things for your show. Beauty, beauty, beauty. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, keep in mind, you should do this with um, groups that might be over portions of your home. You know, for instance, you don't necessarily have to do it on these eye flakes. If I go to the, I believe these are the eye flakes. Let me, let me, I wanna make sure I show you this right. Let me get to the eye. Uh, yeah, these. I did not have to change these. Typically, if there's an equal distance between them, it does a good job with that. Same with the Grand Illusion group. It really does a good job centering, but if I had um, four of these, it might be a good idea. A perfect example would be the GE XLS. Uh, let's just go with the flakes, and let's look at where the center point is. The center point is not quite dead on, but I think it's close enough. I'm not, I'm not gonna split hairs over that, or will I? Oh, oh, let's do, let's do, let's just, Scoot it over. Look at that. Now, now I feel so much better about my show. Look at that. Yeah. Now it's the center point in my house. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Get your groups on. Get them centered up. Get ready for a fantastic season. Love you guys. We'll catch you soon. See ya.